Hello and welcome back to another uh, YouTube tutorial today. I thought it would be a fun one to get into a little bit more of sub-D modeling in Rhino 7. I previously did a video on where I modeled uh, Thomas Heatherwick's Bombay Sapphire Gin Distillery in, in England. And so today I was thinking about other examples of what would be like an interesting form just to quickly model. Not too complex stuff because I'm still experimenting in it totally by myself. Um, when thinking of something to design, I was naturally drawn to uh, Zaha Hadid and some of their uh, or organic forms that they have managed to achieve and some of the complex surfaces they've managed to create. And so what I thought would be a fun design exercise was to actually model um, this guy, which is the Opus Hotel. Um, it's in Dubai. Anyway, so I thought this would be a fun um, uh, thing to look at, sort of like how to, first off, how to sort of control subdivisions and then also control uh, the duality of like these rigid edges versus the really like soft inorganic or organic edges that can are all like sort of contained in the center of this this sort of internal courtyard or atrium it doesn't really look like an uh, courtyard right but <laughs> we can imagine it is um yeah, so I thought that would be a fun exercise and then later as like a, a bonus I also thought it would be fun to quickly transform that um, topology of what of sub D topology to actually creating also the um, Morpheus Hotel, which is another design by uh, Zaha Hadid. These are just all like general sketches, right? They're not, um, they're not like seriously how they would have initially modeled them. There's like structural constraints and so much that goes into it that this is totally gonna ignore. So quickly what I did was I just brought in some images into um, Rhino just so I had the, uh, so I had them when I, when I, uh, so I could sketch and look at these while um, working. And that's simply just typing in a picture and then I've just saved a couple from the internet and then you drag them in, click and drag them in. And then of course I just oriented it and boom, you have a, a reference image that you can use to your, um, to your advantage. Okay, so well first off, Let's, I'm just gonna hide the Morpheus, uh, the Morpheus after uh, the matrix, I, I'm assuming. Something like that, I don't know, I actually know what Morpheus means. Um, anyways, so so I'm gonna come into sub D tools and grab a, uh, a box, which is over here. And you, I, it's gonna prompt me for how many subdivisions. So when I first bring it in, it's gonna, I think it's gonna give me two, two, and two, yeah, which, which is all right, actually, I'm gonna go back, or I'm gonna right click, just to repeat the command. I'm actually gonna put in three, and three, and three, just so that's the default when I do it next. So I'm just gonna bring in three, because that's sort of based off of this. When I So when I'm looking at this image, I can already see generally there's one mass over here, and there's generally another mass that's much lower and it's mostly a void in center and there's another mass. So it's sort of partitioned into three, um, three sides. And of course, from the other elevation, it's also portioned in that. And you can also see vertically, it's gonna be portioned three sort of sides where you have one that's continuous on top, one that has a void in the center and the other one that's continuous on the bottom. So that's sort of like what, what is bringing me to this three by three by three um, typology. And I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna generally like roughly scale. I'm not, of course, once again, I'm not gonna go for a, um, I'm not gonna go to actually create like a, a scaled and a perfect matching model. I'm just gonna do this all real roughly. Um, yeah, so, and there, there, what I just did was I just set it at zero because I had scaled it um, sort of arbitrarily. Anyways, now I'm just gonna go here. I'm just gonna copy this so I can keep like a continuous workflow. Actually, wait, let's let's do this. How many? How many? So I just moved to 2,000 uh, centimeters. So I'm just gonna Alt click on that 2,500, uh, and now we're gonna get. Now we can just continually do that and move it back and forth. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna kind of delete out. Um, surfaces that I know I'm not going to need later on. So for example, I know I'm not going to need these. Um, and also I'm not going to need, actually, you know what, I'm just going to just block both those out. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to take 
these edges of this sub D and I'm holding um, control shift at the same time to select these edges. And I'm going to take this and I'm going to actually bridge and I'm going to join segments. I'm going to include two segments or three, sorry, three segments. So it aligns with the topology that's happening up here. So now remember t uh, tab is what uh, brings you um, in and out of this mode. And I can already see right here, I have sort of a problem where um, these vertices are not being aligned. If I, so if I go control shift, click on this, let's see if it, yeah, you can see that I'm clearly getting, there's uh, vertices that are not connected. So I'm gonna do the uh, align vertices command. And then that hopefully should do it. Actually, and it might, I found, I found for some reason that sometimes it'll, apply creases randomly so what i here i'll go control um control z so so what i found is that so now i had applied this uh align vertices so it is one vertice you can see that if i just click on one vertice, i'm not selecting to check if there's multiple of them there's just one and it and it actually creates a creased point right here and what we're going to learn is that crease also here i'll show you right here so this is what crease does um, just to select an edge loop, another edge loop, control shift and double clicking to select these edge loops. If I type increase on a sub D, what it's going to do is it's going to, it's going to give it and assign it like a hard edge. This can also be achieved by offsetting edge loops really, really close together, which is something that, um, in the gaming industry and whatnot in, uh, polygon modeling, you're going to be doing a lot. Um, anyway, so crease sort of solves that in a way. What I've found is that a lot of times like bridging in Rhino, in Rhino 7 with sub Ds, it adds random creases. So what you can just do is select those curve, um, those thing, those uh, edges that are having the problem and type in remove crease and that should solve the problem. Okay, so we can already see we're rapidly approaching the topology that we do want. Although we do want to connect one of these faces back here. So I'm gonna do, and again, control shift Control shift is a way that you click on faces, edges, or um, vertices. And then I'm just gonna type in uh, bridge, I believe is the command. And here I'm gonna reduce the segment so it, it maintains the same topology as down here. So if I were to eventually want to connect this face and this face, it would be it would match up just to simply get the right topology. And now you can already see that we have a um, a matching topology to the way that is created. And now I'm just gonna sort of spend a little bit of time um, and I'm actually gonna move this over here so I can kind of see it better. Um, I'm gonna spend a little time, you know, actually uh, sculpting. And I'm actually, and I'm looking at this uh, on my other screen, my, uh, so that's what I'm actually gonna use when I'm doing this. Um, anyway, so I'm gonna, it's gonna require a few more edge loops. I'm kind of happy with the general proportions of of how of the the masses compared to the photograph it is sort of a one-third 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 but there's definitely like some other segments so i'm thinking i'm going to need to add some edge loops so what i can do is Control shift and i'm just gonna select that whole edge loop and then type in insert edge and i'm just gonna type let's i'm thinking about putting um one down here and then control shift to get those again. And I'm just gonna put down one here because what I'm doing is when I'm looking at the front, I'm seeing sort of a, uh, a dip. So I'm now, now, now that we've got the general massing, I'm, I'm seeing that there's variance in here. So even within this central third, you can still, you can see that there's, that I'm, so, so here, wait, wait, I'm just gonna divide I mean, I can do this obviously more precisely, but so, so this is the axis of our, um, of our subdivisions. And what I'm gonna do now is I'm, so I have to control within this and look, you're gonna know, I know I'm gonna need at least one point to control this ridge, another one to go down here, and another one to go here. So actually each one of these spaces is gonna be further subdivided into three. You can see how this line is gonna control that point. 
and this line is going to end up controlling this corner point down here. So I'm just going to, so that's what I've done here. And I'm going to, I'm actually going to just bring this over here and uh, rotate it up, shift to align it to like ortho and just kind of place it right there so we can continually look at it. Um, and this guy definitely needs to come down and I'm just going to kind of uh, control shift, click, click, click. Let's bring this guy down. And now that I think about it, both of these have to as well. And the one thing I do notice though is that this this piece back in the back is actually raised up. So I'm just going to control shift on a uh, face, kind of bring it up. Another thing that I'm noticing, and so now if I go to soft mode, it's going to show which is tab, by the way. Um, it's going to kind. You can definitely see I'm starting to get the shape. One thing I'm also noticing is that this point right here is kind of has this peel back, and that this overall. Don't think that this, I think this is going to be pulled forward a little bit. Anyways, I'm kind of at the point now where I do want to look at it. I'm going to control shift and bring this whole edge loop up as well to match that sort of um, depth, that, that changing uh, elevation in the back side. Anyway, so what I'm going to do now is actually add in the creases because it's kind of hard to visualize um, without. So I'm going to control shift and click around this entire uh, edge. So now we have that whole face and we're going to need to do the other side as well. And then these guys, notice that it doesn't, uh, I don't need to do those. I was a misclick. Um, you're going to notice that it's, so it's always searching for the continuity of the edges. Um, and what you're notice is that when you're intersecting with corners, where it's not clearly evident where this edge loop, this edge loop doesn't actually know where it's going at this point. It doesn't have a flow direction. So that's where it gets uh, caught up. And that can be solved with um, different topology, and but uh, just for this purpose, we don't, we don't need to do that. Anyways, okay, so so I just, as you can see, I just creased it and we're already getting a much, much closer um, look to what, to where, uh, to where it actually is at. So I'm going to, I'm just going to kind of fiddle around a little bit. I think we're, we're going to need to add a couple more edge loops sort of to, um, and actually we're also going to need to uh, add these, add a crease on here. So that piece is sort of like that. So we're gonna to need to reinforce all of these with additional edge loops. But I think generally we're actually getting this face. We can just add in like that. I think we're relatively getting close. I think here, I'm gonna look at the other side. So the other side, um, I'll just put that in front just for now. Oh, totally lying. I'm gonna put it behind. Um, and then I can just do minus one on the scale to see it inverted. So now I'm looking at it this way and I'm just gonna do this for clarity's sake. Actually, no, I'm not. Um, so what I'm gonna do now is also just fix up this side and I can see immediately that this is a little bit uh, less less dominant it's a little bit uh, a little bit shorter on this side um, and this is actually inverted so so this face is going to definitely need to come up what it's actually going to be is that it's this face on this side that comes down so you can kind of see there's this the changing in landscape from one side to the other similar to the other side but not quite the same. And actually, if you want to get more precise, if you look at this point, it's much lower. So this edge can just go down a little bit. And we're getting, we're getting there, we're getting there. Um, so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to start adding a few more edge loops because we sort of need to reinforce this curvature. When there's one edge, it, it, it really, uh, the continuity really f between this this edge, it really collapses when we allow it to soften. So what we're gonna need to do is sort of bolster 
um, bolster this uh, this point. And I'm just going to simply do that. I mean, if we're going to be really dirty about it, I'm going to just type in bevel. And what this is going to do is it's going to actually add in that continuity. So you can see when I'm in soft mode, we're getting a much finer result. And I'm going to do it. I'm going to do it pretty tightly. I'm going to I'm going to keep it really uh, close. And then we're going to do the same up here. And and this is becoming this has now become a uh, an n-gon, not a quad, which is not great topology, but for once again for the sake of what we're doing here, I mean we we could solve that by adding another. Uh, loop through the center and, and subdividing that uh, bevel but i don't think it's uh necessary for this uh for this point and what I, what i am going to do is actually add in another edge loop in here so i'm going to type in insert edge and bring this guy up and kind of go in the middle of here and this i'm gonna i think the command is slide slide oh yeah there it is so what you can do now is you can actually slide the edge that's already been created and you can lock it to the midpoint. Actually, can you lock it to the midpoint on mesh? No, no, you can't mid. Oh, it's because it's saying that I already uh, assigned it. Anyways, but that will that will allow you to go back and add in loops that. Oh, and you can see here here. Good. I'm glad we're getting these sort of problems because that allows us to uh, to use other tools like this guy, which is the insert point or mesh to sub D. So what you do is you just click on here and then it'll allow you to draw in your new edge loops. And it'll, it'll also can allow for continuity across uh, multiple uh, faces. So if you just click enter, now you've seen that we've added in that second edge. And now when we look at the picture, oh, did I accidentally, oh yeah, I totally went the wrong direction with that. I'm just gonna drag that over here, maybe up a little bit. And we can see that we've sort of we're definitely getting a bit closer. I think there's, I think I'm just gonna move this guy a little bit here, maybe up a little, little. Um, and maybe this guy, maybe I'll just bring this whole edge over a little bit. And then now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go in here and I'm gonna double click and I'm gonna add uh, a bevel to these bottom edges that are continuous actually. So I'm gonna add a bevel here and you're see, now we're, now we're really starting to talk. I'm gonna add another bevel here. You could of course measure these bevels and 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 get really you know precise. Um, ooh, that's not what we want. This is actually a continuous edge loop. So we're I'm just gonna select those two. And ooh, that is okay. So this that's not nice. That's not nice. I'm not gonna do that. I am actually gonna bevel the entire edge loop. But well, we can see the way all it all back to what I've done. I'm still learning about how to sort of optimize your use of this as well. What you're gonna see is it's it's actually gonna create a triangle right here. And it's and it's also, which just is gonna bring a whole different type of typology into the, um, into the geometry, which is something I really, really don't want. And it's not gonna have nice uh, continuity. So what I, I am gonna just bevel this entire uh, curve which I think will be fine. I'm gonna to try to roughly keep them the same. And I think I'm sort of failing at uh, controlling these surfaces back here. So I'm just gonna move these down a little bit, but but roughly it's whatever. It's just an experiment. And I'm gonna do the same bevel for uh, this surface as well. So now we have here is we're actually getting a really good representation we're never really going to be able to exactly get it with these pictures because of the obviously the the camera that is used with these photographs is like a completely different focal length that I have no idea what it is. But we're very quickly, um, and I think actually this building's a lot shorter than it looks in these images. It's really looking like a skyscraper, but um, but I think for example, if I were just to go to uh, perspective angle and I'm at 13 which is relatively flat and all of a sudden I brought it out to 30 and then I took it from ground then then the second you start comparing it with this photograph 
it's not looking it's not looking radically different um so so yeah it's just kind of i mean of course that's just a perspective angle and whatnot but i am i am really liking how this is looking um the bevels it's going okay this um this this end gone these end gones are not nice but once again i'm just gonna let them be for now that's it's not the tutorial to uh discuss that although i could um i kind of want to bring in another reinforcement so i am actually gonna i'm gonna let's see what happens if i bevel this because i do want this curvature to be tighter as well so i'm gonna bevel you can see what's gonna happen isn't quite exactly what i want so i am just going to do this where i'm going to draw in my own edge loop and you can see how much how much cleaner that is for that topology rather than using the bevel the second you sort of bring in a bevel it does create like a destructive workflow so so for example if i was to move this you, you can see the, the problems you create just because that bevel is already there. Um, and you can, of course, delete these bevels and realign these vertices, but be aware that the bevel is something that you want to sort of bring in at the end when you're confident with your overall um, geometry. So I'm going to add another edge loop on this side. And these ones are going to have to be uh, reinforced across. I could kill it in a triangle, but I'd rather not. Actually, we can just go all the way around. So now you can see it, I just created, now that's a continuous edge loop, which is very good for your, uh, very good for your topology. Anyways, I think that's actually decent. Um, if one 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 helpful thing I found out is if you take this edge loop and you're if you look in for example top mode, you're gonna find that this is actually not um, aligned. It does vary, but what you could do is you could if you do want to do it. So I'm gonna unselect these guys because that's where it's sort of adjusting to the angle. So I'm gonna oh god, I screwed that up. If you did want to scale those all together, which I can just go by here, you could go and go to this um, and scale to zero. And what it's going to do then is it'll align all of those edge loops up, which is something you might want to do. So for example, you just take all of these, scale to zero, these, scale to zero. And now you're looking at a much cleaner um, shape. Sometimes the bevel is going to be the one creating those uh, the bevel is the one that's going to be creating a lot of those um, problems um, where, it, where it actually is going to push your vertices out of this alignment slightly when it creates uh, that. Anyways, I'm pretty confident with how this is looking. And so now I'm just going to quickly um, toss this into Grasshopper. All right, just had some dinner and got some wine for the second half of this. So what, okay, so we're going into Grasshopper now. And I'm just going to, I'm just going to quickly, um, essentially contour this uh this sub d just to generate the the amount of floors in there just to i mean this is no this is just sort of showing the the power that sub d still holds within grasshopper without needing to uh convert it to other forms of like nerves or mesh but you can still use it in some um in some means so you can swap this guy into contour and then all you have to do is give a distance between the contours, which let's just say like a hundred or something. What is that gonna give us? Actually, okay, let's see, yeah, let's pop it into like 75. Maybe let's make it actually like 60. Okay, cool. So now we have a series of contours, which will be our slabs, which we can turn into surfaces, because those will be closed curves, so we can just you can put that directly into surfaces, which result in contours grouped by section. Or we just can extrude. Can we just do that? Z, unit Z. And then let's give it like a five or something. 
So now, if I hide this, it's going to give us each floor, and then we can just simply uh, cap holes for this guy. And it's going to give us an error. I think it's because it's capping out every returned result. Ah, it's because, oh, it's reading that the base level. Okay, let's uh, let's deduce what was going on. It's reading it as like a, uh, I think it's interesting. So wait, wait, bring back show. Let's just move this down like minus one or something. Oh, yep, and that solved it. Okay, cool. So what it was doing is it was, just, it was just having a complicated time. God, I can't type for some reason right now. Um, it, it was just the sub D was intersecting with the zero plane, which is where this coincidentally is starting, where this slab is starting. So it was having a problem actually determining where that curve was and it was not resulting in a closed curve, which is hence why the extrude in the cap and that other, um, and the other surface uh, component that I put in here, that's why that was failing. Well, anyway, so what we can see here is now here, like let's bake these guys. Group, yes, it's okay. And show, and now we have ourselves a quick, I mean a real quick uh, rendition of the Opus by Zaha Hadid in Dubai. Yeah, anyways, so, so we've done that now, and I thought it would be fun so just sort of the fun part was that you could take this, I just want to show you how you can quickly change the topology. Actually, wait, we just need to hide the opus pictures. And we can change this topology to also allow for this creation. So what I'm going to do now is just drag, yeah, let's just create a new one. I'm going to bring it over here just for ease. Let's, so I notice also that there's, so this is, you can see how we're, we're generally getting those same like one, two, three subdivisions looking at it from its front view. Right now I'm not, I'm gonna delete out this, uh, this bridged face back here to start with. And then we're just gonna, we're gonna add in those. So we're gonna sort out those subdivisions later. So I think, okay, so we have these holes, which I think you, we can just do, there's a fill hole here, which is fill sub D hole. Yeah, enter to fill it in. Control shift, double click, right click to repeat, enter, fill it in. Make sure we don't have any of those weird crease um, crease moments. And now we have this. So let's so let's take this topology and actually I'm gonna hold down alt and just copy this up. And then I'm gonna click on this and go minus one to mirror it. And then I'm going to now bridge these faces. So I'm going to you always have to make sure that you're selecting three faces to three faces. You always have to uh, have the same amount of edges um, or faces or uh, if you want to bridge, to actually successfully bridge. So for example, if I just did two, it's gonna fail. But if I go back and then do three to three, bridge, success. Okay, so now we have, you can, <laughs> okay, and we're done. <laughs> we're close, actually. Um, so I'm just gonna sort of control shift and I'm actually gonna scale these out because I think they're, they're closer, maybe more so. And actually I'm going to also control shift, hold down and select all these points. Oh, these, wait, I'm gonna undo that. Um, I'm gonna scale this, I'm just gonna scale this in like this because I think this building is a bit thinner. It's not, it's not so um, meaty as this guy, as the Opus. Um, so right now, basically we're just coming to a series. So let's examine it in the, in the Z direction. We're sort of seeing like one major, if I had to draw a subdivision on here, I would go here. Wait, 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 let's, um, let's just change our guy to red. So you'd see a line here, a line here. Then we're gonna need to sort of subdivide it again further here, 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 where you so you can see that these these faces need to course. So this guy will correspond with that one, and that one will correspond with this one. Oh, I don't. Okay, well, let me get back out of this red. Um, so what's going to happen is so let's just start bridging some faces. So, I mean, we've already now successfully done this before. 
So we're just gonna bridge that. And then we're also gonna need one from here to here. And I'm, I'm gonna do this again, right? Oh, come on. Let's just put this guy here. Of course, I'm doing it all of a sudden on a totally different scale, but in the interest of time, I think it's fine. Control shift, let's grab these guys. Let's bring this down a little bit. The top and the bottom are certainly heavier. Um, you can see it's very like rough ways of, uh, of achieving this sort of um, architecture. But yeah, I mean, to be honest, like that satisfies me. Like you get the correct perspective angle and and basically you you bevel we can bevel actually yeah let's bevel these edges um just to sort of achieve more so at least correctly uh we don't want that point more so the correct um bevel I'm gonna click tab to be out of this. Oh, okay, here, here, here's a good instance where in some spots, are we, okay, well, this, is, this is, it gets a little finicky in here. Um, and actually we can, I'm, I'm seeing this now that we can actually increase the number of segments. So we can do two, Let's see what happens when we do two. That's gonna actually create that like real sharp corner. Offset mode, absolute, straightness, keep creases, yes. And straightness, zero, absolute is proportional. Ah, uh, so this is where it'll actually take the percentile of, of this distance and actually, so so offsetting a, this distance, it's actually gonna take a percentile of it rather than an absolute value. But I think we're gonna wanna keep it um, at this. Uh, so we'll just do a slight, ooh, that's, yeah, that's too much. Um, cell previous, let's see, let's see, oh yep, cell previous worked perfectly, sometimes it doesn't. I forgot also to grab those edges. And let's bevel again, I'm gonna get rid of that one segment that was too sharp. And let's just, uh, that's okay. And you know what, I think that's it. I mean, of course we can go back through and change so radically what it looks like, which is, you know, minor tweaks, sort of the powers that, um, the powers that be, you could play with this forever to try to actually achieve what they have got here, but I'm just trying to show you sort of like the, the gist of it. Um, anyways, thanks so much for watching. This is, uh, please leave a like and subscribe on the vid. Um, I'm gonna keep on trying to put out more. Have a good one, enjoy and cheers.